Hey all INTJs, in today's video learn what you can do to be happier as an INTJ and why it's so important to be happy as an INTJ. Because the truth is I think a lot of INTJs are very ambitious and very much focused on a goal that they believe will fix their life and will bring them some sense of meaning or fulfillment. But I think that many INTJs struggle with, you know, the <laughs> accepting and feeling content in the moment and feeling happy with the situation even if it's not perfect because the truth is you're constantly looking ahead you're constantly looking to your future you're constantly thinking about what you're working towards and so because you're so focused on that your present situation always feels a bit dissatisfactory that means you know it doesn't feel good enough for you it feels like something is missing like there's something else you should be doing you should be further along you should have done more you should have accomplished more but a lot of the time you know the present is all there is you know like while you can entertain and you can have an idea about the future conceptually the present is technically all that you have to deal with you only have who you are your body your current capabilities your current uh, thoughts and that's all you can work with so you can't really hold too much anger or resentment towards your present day self because that's still who brought you here to the begin with so let's think about that so let's take a step back and let's think back to you know how do you see and how do you rate yourself right now like how do you rate your happiness scale one to ten how happy are you feeling right now uh, it's easy to go like seven and to say, yeah, I'm a seven. Like I, I could, I'm good, but I could be better. <laughs> I think that's the general scale. If you ask anyone anywhere in the world, everyone's going to say like around seven. Like most of the time, most of the days they're going to say, yeah, the average person is going to say seven. So <laughs> seven is a great number. Uh, it's the number of luck uh, and potential and opportunity and so many things. So I think it's a <laughs> very attractive number for people to pick. Now, the way I see it as an INTJ, like uh, when you know your personality type, when you know you're an INTJ, you kind of already know what you need to be happy. Well, the truth is all INTJs, <laughs> all INTJs need to have a goal that they are working towards. That means, you know, you need to set a goal for yourself. It can be any kind of goal. You know, people often think that goals only have to be about work or career or getting a promotion. But the best goals you can set are about things that you have control over and about things that you can realistically achieve. So goals can be set anywhere in your life. It can be like having deeper friendships and connections. It can be like being able to have fun. It can be, you know, a personal health goal like being more fit or uh, eating better or anything that gives you a sense of realistic progress or improvement in your life. Part of the reason why INTJs are so ambitious is because of their thinking and judging preference it makes them very proactive and very much focused on things that they can do to bring their life forward. Progress, productivity and effective execution of a project. Those are all things that INTJs enjoy. And the truth is INTJ, you enjoy working towards a goal or a project even if it's just you know getting better in a video game or leveling up your character even just for the sense of progress in itself that's an intrinsic motivator for you you don't need anyone else to tell you hey you did great on this and hey you're so awesome for this you don't need compliments on your goals or how successful you are uh, in that sense because you know these are things that you do for yourself these are things that you do just because as an INTJ, it puts you in a state of flow. It gives you an improved sense of well-being. Another thing INTJs need comes from uh, being introverted and comes from being thinking types. And that's in a sense, as an INTJ, you tend to value efficiency and perfection. And that's like the sense of, you know, everything being in order, everything being just the way it's supposed to be, everything being perfectly in place everything being perfectly balanced <laughs> in that sense what that means is you know uh, do you feel like everything in your life is in order do you feel like everything is being efficient enough do you feel like everything around you is the way it's supposed to be do you feel like everything is in place you know that sense of working towards something and making sure that it's 100 percent perfect and executing something perfectly is something that's a very attractive thought to an intj and intjs enjoy finding ways to fix things and optimize things and make things better in some ways you are efficiency junkies 
Uh, the third thing an INTJ will want to consider is that they're always going to be a work in progress. <laughs> Despite the fact that you seek perfection, you're working with intuitions here. And intuitions, they're never perfect. Intuitions can never be 100% translated to the real world. No matter how hard you try, you're never going to be able to 100% execute a vision exactly as how it was in your head. So one thing you have to work with is recognizing that your intuition is creative, is flexible, is fluid, is ever changing, and is a part of another world. The intuitive world and the sensory world are two different worlds, two different places. And that means whatever you have in here can never be perfectly copied or reproduced in the real world. That doesn't mean, however, that you shouldn't try. And the fact is, learning to develop your sensory and learning to translate your intuitions to the real world is probably your core purpose here on Earth, in a sense. Like, that's the number one thing that you should be thinking about. How can I turn what I have in here into something in here, out there? <laughs> and what that means is, uh, first of all, set realistic time frames for yourself. The worst thing you can do when you're working towards realizing an idea is adding unnecessary or unhealthy deadlines or unhealthy amounts of stress. You need to realistically feel like you're going to be able to complete and to uh, actually put together what it ha is that you have inside here. If you make it too big for yourself, you're going to burn out, you're going to feel like a failure, and you're going to stress yourself out, and you're going to be un needlessly hard on yourself. So recognize that and think about how you can put and uh, turn this into a realistic plan of action. And also recognize, you know, what kind of thing would you be satisfied with in the end, you know? What kind of outcome would you be satisfied with? Okay, sure, this is what you've got here. Uh, this perfect, beautiful plan or this perfect, beautiful, like, concept or idea. Uh, but what outcome in the real world would you be happy with? What kind of things would you be content with? Try to find actual things to give you a sense of progress because you don't just need to have a goal but you also have to have a feeling that you're making progress towards something like even if it's not the perfect copy of what you had in here what would be the minimum viable project or a minimum viable product for you what would it be something that would give you a sense of progress and what would give you a sense of continuity and the best way to think about this is it always has to be better than what you've done before. It always has to be slightly ahead of anything you've ever done before. That means if you feel like you're making progress, if you feel and you can see visibly that this thing that I made here, it might not be exactly what I wanted in my head, but it's much better than what it was one year ago or 10 years ago. I am making progress. I'm learning. I'm figuring things out and I'm doing things better. Those are all things I think that could make you happy. But also recognizing, once again, set goals not just for work or careers, but also set works for your personal life and well-being. Why should your personal life and well-being matter? Well, the fact is you kind of have no choice. You kind of have to deal with it. That means you kind of have to accept that you matter and that your personal health and well-being matters. And so you're going to have to accommodate that. You're going to have to live for hopefully like a hundred years. So you're going to have to make sure that you live comfortably and that you are and take good care of yourself on the way. Because if you're not working well, if you're not happy, your projects are going to suffer for it. So recognize that you need to value your personal identity and your personal feelings. Because if your personal feelings are good, if your personal self is happy, what you do in the real world is going to improve as a result of it. Disagree or agree? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and check out my next video right here.